I found myself really just succeeding in this dark industry. And it was at that same time I began to, to wonder whether or not God really approved of my lifestyle. And I knew that if I was gonna really be a Christian, then I was gonna have to let this music thing go. If he never coming, then I guess it's understandable. You are listening to Young Noah's Testimony, a Musician Story. Young, I know that I know you're not where you wanna be. Young, they used to not rock, but then I put the sauce on thee. Young, I don't know, I don't know if you know I can put you where you ought to be. I got this world in my hands, don't you know that I got a monopoly? Young, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, why are you not seeing me? You are trying to see into the future, but you are not deity. You are not the father, you are not the spirit, you are not the son. You are not the author, you are not the finish, you are not the one. I don't know, 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 I don't know I could put you on top, but you wanna stay in the valley low You wanna flirt with flames, see how high did the fire go I could wash all your worldly stains, but you wanna cherish those Look at you, 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 look at you Draped in designer clothes, but you look pitiful What about your soul, what about your soul, what about your soul now you got a name, now you got a name, everybody knows. Don't let them crown you. Young Noah was born William Bohannon on May 29th, 1987, in Noonan, Georgia. You might be thinking, if his name is William, where does Young Noah come from? Because uh, I sure enough was thinking that. I needed a cool stage name because William wasn't cool enough at the time. <laughs> You know, Noah is a, a character in the Bible, the Old Testament, that preached for 120 so years that it was going to rain. Um, he had this message that had never been heard before. It had never rained before. And so he kind of looked kind of crazy to his peers. And um, now I feel as though I preach a message of Christ Jesus dying for sin. I preach a message of his blood covering the iniquities of the world, as well as his soon return where he's going to come and resurrect the dead and uh, rain fire down on sinners and destroy the world, this time with fire. And uh, it's kind of a message that is hard to believe. And uh, I see comparisons of my story and Noah's story, and so I started to go by that name. It's all right, you ain't gotta be picture perfect to find a purpose for your life. It's all right, if you messed up in a dark place with no light. Cause you can change everything, God. I seen you change everything, God. You are my everything, God. Rearrange everything, God of heaven. God who made the world in six and rest in seven God who told me just because I see success in a Little fame could never mean that I'll impress him A lot of people would agree that he is excellent More importantly, in every vote God's hand, rule majority Seek his face when he speaks, act accordingly God, please, don't let go of me Blessed into the stars High up in the heavens you have for me for the early part of his life, he grew up in a two-parent household with his six other siblings until his parents split up when he was around nine or ten. So my mom, you know, she was doing the housewife thing, but she went and got a job and basically raised us, all seven of us, on her own. My dad was definitely around. He was definitely uh, in our lives it was just different not having him in the home. And um, it was definitely a, a transition. There was a lot more freedom. <laughs> there was a lot more freedom at home without him uh, whooping everybody every time we did something wrong. So uh, my dad was more the disciplinarian and uh, my mom was more lax. So that was a good and a bad thing, you know, when they split. My mom was a diehard Christian. Uh, I remember... I can't recall ever seeing her sin. <laughs> so uh, growing up with her as a, a role model was definitely key to uh, me eventually turning my life over to Jesus um, later on in my 
college days. We went to church for sure every week. Um, my mom, you know, we didn't have a choice <laughs> but to go. And I, I used to like church, you know. Um, my church had a basketball team I played on. Um, when I was 14, I got baptized. And, you know, you it's kind of like when everybody's a Christian in the home, it makes it easier. But as I went through high school and college, I began to just really stray from God. I began to just fall into a lot of peer pressure and to just do things that I knew just were wrong. But um, I, I didn't, I hadn't fully converted and, and really given Jesus everything. I don't know if I can handle. I don't know if I can handle situations surrounding me. I get so down on me. It's getting hard to breathe. It's getting hard to see if you are even a part of this industry. I used to do this for you and you alone. Now I feel like I am doing this on my own. They lifting me up, they lifting me up. I do not want the throne. My kingdom is not a fear. I'll be young forever when I'm gone. Don't let them crown you. Don't let them lift you up too high. What are you afraid of? You'll be young forever. Like what you're hearing so far? Check us out at TestimonyStories.com. That's TestimonyStories with an S. Dot com. com. Where you can hear content for you and about you. Everyone has a testimony. Yeah. Everyone, Everyone has, has a testimony. testimony. And we want to hear yours. Tell us how God has transformed your life. Each month, we will select a person to highlight and interview. Find out more at TestimonyStories.com. Testimony. Testimony, where Christian hip hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. Now back to Young Noah's Testimony, a Musician Story. I remember when I told him, if you real, come and show me back when I was living shady, get it faded with the homie, I know. William played varsity basketball and was more concerned with being popular and fitting in than expressing his Christian beliefs. Eventually, he started experimenting with drugs and got involved with gang activities. Just being a, a hip-hop artist was what really kind of pulled me away. I started to pursue a, a career in uh, hip-hop, and uh, my content was just absolutely horrible. And um, just the lifestyle of being a performing artist, and I traveled doing concerts and shows, and just the lifestyle and the message in my music was just horrible. And I just woke up one day and I found myself just, you know, addicted to marijuana and drinking every night and um, uh, just just living a, a impure lifestyle that just totally pulled me so far from God. And it's like you look up one day and you're like, man, how did I how did I end up in this position? I remember in college I had got in a, a fight and eventually a shootout on my campus that um almost cost my cost me my life. A car that I was in, you know, got like three shots going through the windows. And it was at that time when I really thought that I was about to die. And I knew that if I died that I wouldn't I just wouldn't inherit God's kingdom. I knew that if I died at that moment I was I was going to hell and you know that kind of shook me up a bit. A couple of days in jail kind of just made me rethink life. But you know, when I got out of jail, I didn't really exactly totally change. It was just like well, thank, thank you, Lord. You got me out of that situation. But it was later on that I really turned everything over to God. I was a good guy. You know, there was girls at this party and they were kind of afraid that, you know, some guys, some football players at the school were going to take advantage of them. So they asked me and my friend to give them a ride home. We're giving these girls a ride home. Next thing you know, we're getting attacked by like a hundred football players 
And um, because they were they were drunk and high and out of their minds and they were kind of angry with me because I was trying to take these girls from the party and give them a ride home. And next thing I know, I'm getting chased down the street by a whole bunch of guys (laughs) that are way bigger than me. And um, so, you know, I pulled out a weapon that I had on me, um, a gun that I had that didn't even work trying to keep them from, you know, beating me up. And they ran and I got in my car and I tried to drive away with my friend. Next thing I know. You know, I heard for the first time in my life, I felt like I heard God, you know, speak to me. And um, he just said, duck. (laughs) It was that simple. He told me to duck. So I ducked my head into the dashboard. I reached over. I grabbed my friend's head and I threw his head into the steering wheel. And next thing I knew, it was just shots fired and glass was just flying everywhere. And um, it was at that moment when I realized like I was about to die, you know. And uh, so it was it was it was my fault. I think it was just God's way of, of getting my attention. You know, I was involved in gangs and uh, I used to do a lot of robbery and I used to try to sell drugs and I was just really a loose cannon. And it was weird to grow up in church and end up so far away from God. And, you know, I always tell people like, you know, church and and growing up in church and that stuff can't really save your soul. It kind of shapes you as a child, but eventually you have to make a decision whether or not you're going to allow God to just live in you and cause you to just do good works, you know, because church can't save a person. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to accept Christ. You need to have a regeneration in your your mind and your body. You have to be born again. You have to be, you know, filled with the Spirit if you're really going to live a life pleasing to God. One day I'm going to have to go and lay in that coffin. This is something that I think about too often. Every time that I think about it, I'm exhausted, and I'm trying to figure my way about it, but I'm falling. In the meantime, got my brightly on, and I'm flashing, riding around with my partner. Heard the voice of my father. I swear he told me, but the Bible told me not to swear. He told me ducking, now it's bullets whizzing everywhere. No bright light, no life before my eyes. All I thought was, man, this is how I'm finna die. Right here, face down in my homie ride. How was I to know the voice inside my head was God? You don't know me, you don't owe me, you don't want me, God. And at that moment, everything in my life fell apart. Lord, show me how to live, show me where to start. Forgive me for my sins coming to my heart. Shots being fired at him caused him to wake up. Seeing how far he had come from that 14-year-old kid who had been baptized in his family church helped him to recommit his life to Christ. Man, it was simple. I mean, I was sitting in the back of my car one night. I was too high and drunk to drive, and my friend was driving, and I said, you know, I told my friends, I said, I'm tired. Tired of living this way. I'm tired of seeing my life go down the drain. I remember I won this competition when I was 18 years old to fly out to California and record a demo, and uh, it was kind of like my big break when I was in the world just doing whatever I had to do to make money. I found myself really just succeeding in this dark industry. And it was at that same time I began to to wonder whether or not God really approved of my lifestyle. And I knew that if I was going to really be a Christian, then I was going to have to let this music thing go. And um, one night when I was in the car, like I said, I just told my friends, I'm just tired. I'm tired of living this way. And I felt like God was telling me, Look at the example you're setting for your for your family, for your brothers and sisters. Um, you know, they're going to end up going down this same path you're going. So when I was in L.A., Los Angeles, I, um, you know, I told my manager, I told the, the record company, I told everybody that I just can't do this anymore. I just want to be a Christian and I'm ready to go home. So they put me back on the airplane. I flew home and I was done with music forever. Um, But it took a while. You know, it took a lot of praying. I I remember praying, coming home drunk and high, praying, God, I don't want to be this way. I want to change. I don't want to, I don't want the rest of my life to look like this. Um, Deep down, the whole time I was in my sin, I kind of had a feeling that, you know, one day I'm going to come out of this. One day God is going to free me from all of these chains that are on me. And uh, he eventually did. And man, I've just never been the same. You know, I've, 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 Messed up here and there, but uh, the the course of my life is is so different. The path that I'm on is just towards heaven, you know. And and anything that is straying me away from that, 
I try to stay away from, you know, as best I can. I remember when I told him if you real, come and show me back when I was living shady, getting faded with the homie, I know, I know. You don't owe me, you don't owe me, I know, I know. You don't know me, you don't know me. I remember when I told him if you real, come and show me back when I was living shady, getting faded with the homie, I know, I know. You don't owe me, you don't owe me, I know, I know. You don't know me, you don't know me, God. Testimony. Testimony, where Christian hip hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. Connect with Testimony and Musician Story through social media. Find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at TestimonyStories.com. William walked away from music forever, so he thought. He had no idea Christian hip-hop existed. Well, he does recall getting a CD once as a teen and throwing it out the window because he thought it was garbage. So becoming a full-time CHH artist was the furthest thing from his mind. My stomach, like I'm finna vomit. Spirits about as low as my eyes. Thinking to myself, I know the end coming, but I can change myself, rearrange myself. Lucifer's lies. Homie at the wheel, like, man, this was a good night. Then why I feel like I'm dying inside. Yo, let me out the truck. Yeah, this my last blunt. You mean like forever? Yeah, I gotta get myself together. God speaking to me. Are you equal with me? Don't you know I'm real as all these people you see? Don't you know I made you unique? Follow me, I'll get you back on your feet. Walking through the valley of the shadow of dead men. Does anybody care about us? Can anybody tell us what happens? Where we go, where we go, where we go. I felt like hip hop was supposed to be, you know, dark. I didn't think that it could be redeemed and used for positive things, so. When I became a Christian, I didn't ever consider myself, I didn't even think it was possible to, hey, I can make songs about God. That was the furthest thing from my mind. I just wanted to be a Christian. I didn't care if I ever rapped again, but then I started to feel a conviction of, hey, you know, you can use this music for my glory. You know, God was kind of telling me like, hey, why don't you make songs about your new life? You know, you rapped about your old life, rap about your new life. And so I started to make these songs. It was like a year later when I finally started recording. But uh, I just started writing these songs and I would go to open mic nights and talent shows and I would just perform with just the regular people and uh, do these songs about Jesus. And uh, a couple people caught wind of it and a couple of Christian hip hop artists kind of pulled me in and we started a group and we started making these albums, these Christian hip hop albums. And I just became, you know, one of the one of the premier guys in the group. And when I graduated school, I sent a demo in to this record label called Clear Sight Music. Flame heard my CD. He he immediately called me and was like, hey, I want to work with you. Next thing I know, I was on an airplane flying to London and Canada and the Caribbean and all over the United States just doing shows. And uh, it was like this miracle from God that, man, he he took me from rapping about garbage and then he turned me into one of these Christian rappers, and I didn't know this whole world of it existed. And uh, next thing I know, I'm just having more success doing this for God than I ever had when I did it for myself, you know, for selfish reasons. I was on Clear Sight like a year and a half. I don't know. I felt like God was just pulling me away. I felt like it was, it just wasn't the place, it wasn't a permanent place that he had for me. God um, used that situation to grow me, to uh, teach me about the industry. Flame was a great role model. You know, he was a man of God. I saw how he, you know, was always in his word. 
I saw how he viewed all the hustle and bustle and I saw how faithful he was to his wife and uh, to his ministry and to the church. And uh, it was just like a learning experience so that I could eventually handle uh, being a Christian hip hop artist without, you know, being consumed by still chasing after the same thing. So I just feel like God used it to uh, groom me to, uh, you know, just put me in a, a good position to succeed. Lord, I break against every temptation out here leading me astray. Break me, break me down, Lord, in every way. Crush me down in the ground till I fade away. Break me, break me, break me every day. Build me up in the spirit till I'm in your way. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be every night that you calling me to be every day. God broke me down, God broke me down, God broke me down. God broke me down, God broke me down, God broke me, God broke me down, God broke me down, God broke me, God broke me down, down, down. So that he could build me up. Everyone has a testimony, and we want to hear yours. Tell us how God has transformed your life. Each month, we will select a person to highlight and interview. Find out more at TestimonyStories.com. Testimony. Download the podcast of Testimony and Musician Story on iTunes. Find out how at TestimonyStories.com. A Musician's Story. Testimony. A Musician's Story. Testimony where Christian hip-hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip-hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Young Noah, checking in, and you are listening to Testimony, a Musician's Story. Young forever young, yeah. We've been living for nothing if he don't ever come, yeah. yeah. We've been living for none, yeah. Might as well throw a party, party into the sun, yeah, yeah. Young forever young yeah. We've been living for nothing if he don't ever come yeah, yeah. We've been living for none yeah. Might as well throw a party, party into the sun yeah, yeah, yeah. Young Noah has been independent ever since Last year he signed a management deal with First Company Management in Nashville under their new hip hop division ran by radio personality Chris Chicago. This is uh, the management company started by Wes Campbell, who is the manager for the Newsboys, Audio Adrenaline, Seven Time Down, Rapture Ruckus. And they have just really got behind me and helped me to uh, just go further. But um, it's a few record labels that are calling, you know, sending contracts, but um, I'm trying to figure out, you know, which one is the right fit. I'm not really desperate to sign a record deal. God is just putting me on these massive tours, just making cool stuff happen for me, even though I don't have this label machine behind me. Recently, he dropped an EP entitled Young Forever. If he never coming, then I guess it's understandable to eat, drink, and party like an animal and hit the strip club on the best drug. Getting messed up, chasing girls like a cannibal. Ladies getting dressed up, only wear the best up. Fresh hair and makeup, life so mechanical. Every day the same thing. Yourself to the place you wanna be, be a wanna be. Keep my eyes focused on the things right in front of me. There is nothing coming after this life, honestly. Life cheats, still need to kill who can punish me. What if Christ never did say come to me? What if everything he did say is heresy? All of this is some bullish, apparently. Got us out here looking real foolish, apparently. Can even come to grips with the reality. Young forever young. A lot of people kept asking, Young Noah, you're not young anymore. When are you going to drop young off your name? And I was like, nah, I'm living for eternal things. Uh, when Jesus comes, he's going to give me a new body and I'll live forever with God. So this 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 album, Young Forever, is just really just helping people to have an eternal perspective 
on their lives, knowing that all of this earth is going to pass away and all of these things we wasted our time chasing are going to be burned to ash. And the only thing that really matters is, um, do you know Jesus and is Jesus coming for you? Is he going to raise you from the dead? Are you going to live forever with God? So the, the concept is just, you know, being young forever. And uh, the debut single off the project was a song called Long Way to Go that featured audio adrenaline. And it's just been blowing up on radio, which is so weird because Christian hip hop doesn't really get a lot of radio play. But this song is just like number 18 on the the billboard charts for radio play. And um, a lot of people are just like, how in the world is this Christian rapper on the radio? And so uh, God really just opened up a lot of doors with that song, Long Way to Go. And uh, we shot a crazy video for it that's uh, basically about a kid getting bullied that ends up purchasing a gun and going to his school to shoot at all the people that have been bullying him. And uh, his friend, who's a Christian, actually steps in and uh, stops the whole thing from happening. So there's this powerful video that we dropped earlier this year that's just been blowing up all over YouTube and Facebook and um, has really been encouraging kids to uh, speak up and speak out against bullying. It's it's actually helped some bullies turn from their ways. And uh, it's just been a great, the project has just done so well already. I'm just grateful to um, have put together such an incredible project. One of the massive tours young Noah has been fortunate to join is the We Believe God's Not Dead tour with the Newsboys. Oh, we got a long way to go. There's no going back to the life we lived, the life we used to know. We got a long way to go. I've given everything. There's nothing left. There's nothing left to lose. Just this huge thing that I've been blessed to be a part of. And it's just unreal to be a part of something so big. I remember sitting in the movie theater watching God's Not Dead when it came out. It's just funny what God does. He'll take you. He'll just do crazy stuff. And it's so strange to be on this tour, to be going to this movie premiere, and uh, to just be a part of this action. I was at the theater watching Superman versus Batman. And I saw the premiere for God's Not Dead. And it's just so crazy when these trailers come on in these theaters and we're talking about keeping Jesus in schools. We're talking about uh, religious liberty. And um, it's it's so funny to see the way that non-believers react. They're just sitting in the theaters like, wow, like how is this even, how am I even seeing this? Some people don't like it, you know, and then there are the Christians in there that are just super excited about it. But the world is just growing dark. It's just growing dark and and people really don't want to hear about Jesus. They just, they hate God. And it's sad, but it's true. And I'm so grateful that there are people putting together these films and these films are doing well. And uh, it's just a testament that that God can do anything and Jesus is, is still alive and he's still, you know, reaching out to people, trying to get their attention. I've given everything, there's nothing I can't describe Never had so much peace in my mind It must be God I smile without a reason to smile Cause I'm alive I ain't felt this good in a while I'ma survive, man I see what you're doing I've been there too I remember the ruin I fell into pursuing everything you were doing But there's light at the end To be free from your sin But you gotta choose if you wanna move Or stay glued to your point of views Stay stuck with the black and blues Cause the world will hit you hard, leave you with a bruise You can follow my lead, you can go there with me Just confess and be free, there is freedom indeed I supply every need, are you ready to be? Are you ready to dream? Dream Oh, we got a long way to go Thank you for listening to Testimony, a musician story To hear this episode again, as well as past episodes Visit TestimonyStories.com until next time, I'm Brown Theory, the music lover constantly seeking positive music. I've given everything, there's nothing left, there's nothing left to